the improvement in quantity and quality of the cotton and pottery industry during the Industrial Revolution was due to new ideas like division of labor and new inventions, such as the spinning jenny because of the mechanization of industry. Mechanization of industry, or the process of doing work with machinery, was the center point of the Industrial Revolution. When the first water frames for spinning cotton were erected at Cromford, mankind were a little aware of the mighty revolution which the new system of labor was destined by providence to achieve. Andrew Year, The Philosophy of the Manufacturers Many goods previously done by hand could now be done quickly and efficiently, using machines. One of the most popular goods affected by mechanization was the coffin industry. To turn ideas into thriving businesses, inventors had to partner up with entrepreneurs or become businessmen themselves. Creating a working prototype usually took many years and many inventions were unsuccessful. However, beginning in the 1760s, a chain of inventions revolutionized the spinning of cotton thread. These inventions include the spinning jenny, water frame, spinning mule, cottagen, and the power line. One of my primary objects is to form the tools so the tools themselves shall fashion the work and give to every part its just proportion. Eli Whitney. As, as a result of mechanization of industry, cotton and other goods can now be sold for less. The cotton industry used mechanization to their advantage to make the production of cotton faster and cheaper. Cotton was grown mostly in Eastern Asia and the Middle East, and most of it was sent to Europe. When the English Parliament banned cotton from England, Europeans created new ways to make cotton locally, the first of which was the spinning jenny invented in 1764 by James Hargreaves, a British carpenter. The spinning jenny spun cotton threads together into string quicker than by hand. Another helpful machine was created in 1769 called the water frame. The water frame was an invention made by Richard Arkwright which used the power of a moving river to strengthen cotton so that clothing could be made of pure cotton, not a cotton wool blend. We were sometimes allowed to peer in through a sort of blind door at the great water wheel that carried the works of the whole meal. It was so huge that we could only watch a few of its spokes at a time, and part of its dripping room, Lucy Larcombe. Machines replaced many workers, which made production costs of cotton lower, so now cotton could be sold for less. Cotton production became cheaper as well as faster. This new demand for cotton was supplied by America. This demand and ability to create so much cotton made cotton America's most valuable crop. This helped to make America into the leading cotton producer of the world by the 1850s. Mass Production of Pottery Before the technological revolution, pottery was a luxury good, imported from China. Only the rich had the money to transport it the long way to Europe. As Britain started importing more tea from China, they wanted more porcelain pottery, which did not spoil the taste. This new demand spurred the pottery industry in England. One new way to make pottery cheaper was the division of labor, created by Josiah Wedgwood. Wedgwood made many workers that each did one task over and over, such as dipping the pottery in a glaze. He also used many molds instead of the traditional way of forming pottery by hand on a wheel. These new ideas made pottery cheaper and more available by reducing the amount of skilled workers needed and the time to produce one product. One example of the pottery industry of England growing was the town of Staffordshire. Pottery manufacture grew as an industry from a very strong base. By 1740, North Staffordshire was already the center of production for England. By 1800, it was the most important center in the world. E. MacArthur. This new pottery was also cheaply shipped with the new trains and roads made. These new ways of making products efficiently and through the division of labor is known as mass production and it propelled the pottery industry.